Welcome back to the NFL Imperialism franchise. Today with episode 6, it is a special one. We are beginning the playoffs, which means if you're just joining us for the first time, haven't watched any of these episodes in this series, you might as well catch up now. You've missed a lot. But anyways, that's your final spoiler warning because we're going to recap with our previous episode. Previously on the Imperialism franchise, we are swapping places with another team. It's going to be the Dallas Cowboys, where I dive headfirst with Najee Harris for the touchdown that put us up 7-0. We're trying to make it 14-0 too. Look at this, Jamar Chase off to the races. I want to showboat here, but I'm just going to take my points instead. I tried to slide, but the game did not register it, and now I'm just going to just... I don't even know what to say, man. Yeah, I mean, this game ended up 47 to 28. Jalen Warren, and I just gave him CTE on his first ever play as a Steeler. And we are at zero seconds. Here's a buzzer beater to Jamar Chase. We barely got it off, but we ended up winning the game 34 to 20 after scoring the touchdown Najee Harris there. Right when I get the ball back, I'm going to throw it to Najee Harris. I have too much trust in him. He's going to fumble the football again. That's his third fumble of the game in back-to-back -back fumbles, and it's a scoop and score. Oh, and to make matters worse, not one, not two, not three, four fumbles in a row, or three fumbles in a row. I can stop on this tangent now. We lost 38-24 to thanks to Najee Harris and fumbling the football. This RNG of a loss cost us the one player I did not want to lose, but the three teams eliminated were the Bears, Bengals, and Vikings. Only 17 teams remain, and we're eliminating the final three after two games. So we are on week 16 now, and considering we're only playing a 17-game schedule, so that's two more games to play. But remember, following the trend, we have three empty spaces, and we need three more power-ups. So we're going to spin our wheels to see where our power-ups are going to go. We're going to start with Minnesota's Old Land, which will be getting the Rewind power-up. We've seen this one a lot, but I'm not too mad about it. And then next up, we get Chicago's Territory, which will be reserving the Double Trouble power-up. Good to see that one again. And finally, that leads us with Cincinnati's Territory, which is actually in South Florida now, which will be getting the Poisoned Power Down. We haven't seen that in a minute. So we place down our three new collectibles on the map. They're only going to be there for two weeks, so teams better claim them while they can. Unless you're the Jaguars right here, you want to stay as far away as possible from Miami. But yeah, let's just see if we can pull out one more win at least, make the playoffs, and we are going to start the wild card round this episode. Arrow points to the right and a little bit north. Well, it looks like we have a date with the Kansas City Chiefs, our first time playing them. Not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous, but you know what? I'm holding it in. I don't think I'm wetting my pants just yet. What's the worst that can happen? 8-7 record, we can clinch a playoff berth with a win right here, so we're going to start by hitting Najee Harris in the flat. That's a first down and more after you broke one tackle. And since Najee Harris is the only receiver on this team who can catch the football properly, apparently, he's going to get this one again. That's going to be a pickup of nine. Followed shortly by the 26-yard line where I'm going to scramble out of the pocket, get Patty free on this one, so free to the 6-yard line. That's first down and goal. For whatever reason, I ran a check down here thinking that was going to work. It did absolutely nothing, so we set up a fourth down and goal, and this is where I'm going to take my points with Justin Tucker but we'll make it three over the Kansas City Chiefs. Fortunately, the Chiefs did not strike the end zone, which is surprising to me. So once again, I hit my wide receiver number one, Najee Harris, for the first down. 38-yard line, second down and seven. I find a dirty route by Deontay Johnson, who has his first catch of the game. It's to the 22-yard line now. From the 22-yard line, I hand this off to Najee Harris. I get a few good blocks and some lucky animations, but it's good enough to cash in six. We're going to have a 10-0 lead over the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, yes, this is the Chiefs, so scoring a touchdown is going to happen eventually, and that's exactly what happened here. So it's 10-7 now, but we're still in the lead. Look at this route again by Deontay Johnson. That's the second big catch of the game, and it's going to put us right around midfield. I ended up calling a timeout. I had 40 seconds left, and I get another one. I'm looking to try to get three points on the board here, and I get Allen Robinson to the 36. Final timeout called. We're third down and 10 with 22 seconds left. I'm not risking anything. I know Justin Tucker has the leg. He's going to put it through. It's 13-7 going to the locker room, and I also get the ball back at half. So here we go again. Hit B for this receiver right here, which is George Pickens, his first catch. He has a first down. And third down and one from the five-yard line. I stand still, and I get this one delivered to Deontay Johnson, who's had himself such a game so far. This is going to make it 20-7. to Now, for whatever reason, we actually went for two, but we didn't get it, so it's actually 19. And the Chiefs did score a touchdown, so we have to put some points on the board here. But luckily, it's the fourth quarter late. All I need is the first down. That's going to put up six right there. Hand this off to Najee Harris again. That's the first down we've been needing. The Chiefs will call their second timeout. Out, and we're able to burn the entire clock out with this field goal kick just to rub it in their faces because we just beat the Kansas City Chiefs with a final score of 22 to 14.
Week 16, we did the unthinkable and took down the powerhouse Chiefs in a very conservative played game. This was a very helpful win considering in order to beat playoff teams, we are going to need big time playmakers. 99 overall Travis Kelsey joins the Steelers. Other movements include Tyreek Kill going back to the Dolphins, Lane Johnson back to the Eagles, Devontae Adams is having an identity crisis, he does not know if he wants to be a Ram or a Bronco, and Chris Jones joins the all-star Niner defense. The Packers were the only team to use a power up this week, that being the Rewind, stationed on Minnesota's old territory. Following the same no quarterback adding or subtracting clause I followed in this series, I passed on giving Brett Favre to the Packers and rewarded them back with one of the greatest defensive players of all time. Long live. Reggie White. This is our second to last standing check. We're starting with the Dolphins still going strong, but that one loss, remember who it was? It was us. They're number one still. The Niners do follow with 11 wins. They're just under them with those two extra losses kind of hurt. We just beat the Chiefs. They fall to three, but they're still 10 and four. The Packers, I'm really surprised they did really good this series. I mean, these teams, it's just crazy the teams that clinched. The Panthers and Broncos in the top eight too. It's just so weird. Here's the second page, and you can see we're sitting at the 12th spot, and we have already clinched the playoffs. Matter of fact, Every single team has clinched through the 13th spot. I mean, the Rams have clinched. The only spot not clinched is that 14th spot. It's either going to be the Jaguars or the Cowboys. The Giants and Lions are already 100% eliminated. But yeah, you can see a lot of the teams in front of us is just a matter of one game. So I'm really hoping we can win this next week. The good news too is that the Chargers and Falcons, they're actually sharing borders with us. There's a big chance we play one of those teams. If we get a win there, that's going to put us above it. And actually, seeding does matter going into playoffs. We'll see how it works in a minute. But yeah, like I said, here's the final page. The Lions and Giants already eliminated, basically. Here you can see the eight other teams eliminated on the third page. And then the final page, once again, all these teams have been gone for weeks. We've made it to the final wheel spin. This is our final week. It's going to be one of four teams, that being the Broncos, Chargers, Chiefs, and Falcons. We've all played these teams once, but i like to get my revenge. And I would like to stockpile another good player going into the playoffs playoffs. Let's just see where our final game takes us and I think the Chargers? Oh yeah, this is definitely going up north so it's time to get a revenge. I really want to win this game. It's going to put us above the Chargers. It's going to move us up the boards and if we win, we get to steal a really good player because I already know the Chargers are stacked. Come on, we need to get a win here in week 17, our final regular season game. Let's finish strong. <laughs> Can and will we end on a high note? It's versus the Chargers. This is a team we've been struggling against a lot this series, but we're going to start with our new target. Already getting him involved. He's already making a difference. It's Travis Kelsey. Now to the 32-yard line. We're handing off to Najee Harris, and things have just been looking too good for this game as I take this one to the crib with Najee Harris. Put up six after a 25-yard run to the end zone. Chargers can't score, so we get the ball up seven. Once again, guess who I'm going to? Travis Kelsey. I just hope we can keep him for more than two games this time. And from the 20-yard line, end up getting to a fourth down and full, but I'll take my points with Justin Tucker as once again, we make this a 10-0 game, but this is where the Chargers would respond, so it's 10-7. I run a play-action pass. I'm up the middle, just barely enough space to get this one to Allen Robinson, the first down and 10 to the 43, and followed up by a second down and 10, 5 minutes and 30 seconds of the second quarter. Guess what? It's Travis Kelsey again as he bulldozes this dude, puts us at a first down. Now up to the 19-yard line. A couple of plays later, I'm going up the midfield again. Got Deontay Johnson, and he dives in the end zone. The interior defense is not looking too good for the Chargers, and that's going to put us to 17 points. Chargers would get a field goal out of it, and I try to scramble, but here's my first mistake of the game, and that's on the ground. The Chargers pick it up. Guess what's going to happen? They're going to tie the game up. So I got to get back in the game with Travis Kelsey now. That's exactly what I'll do. So it's a first down and 10 around midfield. Can always go to him when I need to. And now hand the ball to Najee Harris. I have a big run. That's going to put us into Chargers territory at the 34 yard line but once we get to the 19 yard line i'm going for a pass i get this one off the midfield again deontay johnson we stopped just short of the two this time where you already know the drill i'm going to pass it this time i don't know how i got this one through but i had to get a touchdown to travis kelsey as he's been doing it everything on offense for us that's another touchdown on the board to make it 24 to 17 you know i could cover kenny pickett's hands in gorilla glue and he would still fumble the football because this is his second strip sack of the day and this one turned even worse because it was a scoop and score so it's going to tie the game up at 24 i don't really know why scooping scores are so common in this series. I think it happens once an episode, but now 24 apiece. Kenny Pickett throws a horrible pass. I think he does this once a game where he just decides to suck for a straight quarter, and I had to punt the football because of that. Getting the ball back to the Chargers with this high-powered offense was not what I wanted to do. They haven't getting three points out of it, so I have to respond. I hit Allen Robinson for a big pickup here on third down and 10 to give us some life in this game, but another third down and 10. I'm fourth quarter here. I'm going up midfield again. Travis Kelsey is doing it 
all for me this game. And now second down and goal, you already know the drill. When I'm that short of the goal line, I'm doing a quarterback sneak. So Kenny Pickett makes up for what he did earlier, and that's going to put us in a lead 30-27. to Not until the Chargers obviously go down this field and score a touchdown. So now with 31 seconds left, it's a three-point game. I'm trying to get something out of this. I get a good completion here. I'm going to get close to field goal line. That would tie the game up. But it would not matter at all because I would make a crucial mistake as you watch as I throw probably one of the worst passes right here. And it just gets intercepted by the middle linebacker. And that's where we'll end the game here. 34-31. to 31, And the curtains will fall in a 9-8 and eight record for us Steelers in the regular season. If you couldn't tell, that was one of my most frustrating losses this season. I had a chance to jump the standings and stockpile another great player. But instead, it ends up costing me yet another superstar. Travis Kelsey. Our final regular season movements conclude with Jerry Rice joining the pack, Micah Parsons to Denver, Miles Garrett to Carolina, but the biggest of them all, the Cowboys got a clutch week 17 win to snag the playoff spot over the Jaguars, and with the double trouble power up, they were able to steal both of Miami's 99s, Michael Pittman Jr., and Deion Sanders. The last power-up of the series was used by the Chiefs as they secured the double trouble power-up right before the playoffs began. These power-ups will carry over into the postseason. The poison power down, however, was never claimed by the Jaguars, but it didn't matter anyways as the Jaguars ended up eliminated. Here it is, the final standing check. We now have our top 14 teams in place. We'll go over it a little bit more in depth in just a minute. But starting with the number one seed, ended up being the Dolphins finishing 11-2-1. Niners get the running up seed at 11-4-2. Followed shortly by the Packers, Broncos, Chiefs, Jets, Eagles, and Panthers, which are all teams that finish with 10 or 11 wins. And on the second tab, the only other team to finish with double-digit wins was the Chargers, making nine teams to finish 10 or better. Following up by the Falcons, the Bills, and then us, we stayed at 12. I really wish we could have jumped higher, but at least we made the playoffs nonetheless. And then you can see the Rams underneath us and the Cowboys made the playoffs. And you're probably saying that's not fair. How are the Cowboys in the playoffs if they have a negative record? They're 6-7 and seven, and the Jaguars missed it because they're 7-7. Seven and, seven. and if you get two expansions, it equals one win because an expansion is half a win. So because the Cowboys have four expansions, pretty lucky, but that's just how it goes. That equals out to two wins, meaning the Cowboys really have an 8-7 and seven record which is better than 7-7. Seven and seven. So yes, that means the Jaguars are eliminated. We already knew the Giants were eliminated. They got skipped. They're 4-7-2. And, and on our third page as well, you can see the Lions who sat at 17. They were also eliminated. But yeah, a lot of pretty good teams were eliminated around this time. Look at the Bengals, the Vikings, the Ravens. Even on the final page, I didn't really expect the Titans and the Seahawks, these teams, to fall that early, but that's just how it went. So before we begin the playoffs, I want to give you one last look at a regular season map. Now, those three white spaces will be filled up in a second i'll explain how it's going to work but we're down the 14 teams and this is what it's going to look like i want to show you this graphic real quick which will give us the playoff seedings and yes you can see there are buys we are including buys now the nfl playoffs in real life it has the afc and nfc in the top seed from both conferences is a buy but because we didn't do conferences in this series I'm just going to have the top two teams get a bye. That obviously being the Dolphins and Niners. So no team can play them in this first round. And then you can see 3 through 14 labeled right here. And here's the first look at the new playoff map. You probably noticed two things right off the bat. Number one, there's no more white spaces. Considering there's going to be no power-ups in the playoffs, what I did is I just distributed the land to the teams next to them. And you also notice that there's a number next to every team. That is their seed. Because whichever team has the lowest seed, they will get home field advantage from here on out. Now, how will the matchups work? They work a little bit differently. Differently. It's going to work based on who you share borders with, considering that's the only way to logically do it. The reason it has to be done like this is, remember, we have two buys. They can't be played in the first round, and considering they take up a big space, you have to work around it, and there's only certain matchups you can do, considering they share borders with teams. It's kind of confusing, but I think you understand it. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to simulate, live simulate, the rest of these games. Then we're going to play our wildcard game. So we're going to start on the West Coast. We'll do this 4-seed Broncos versus the 13-seed Rams. <laughs> First wild card game we're looking into is Chargers versus Rams. Matthew Stafford drops back and delivers a dot to Van Jefferson. A good comeback catch right there to put him at first down and goal at the five yard line. They are down by four though, and it's going to be the two minute warning. Once again, another pass for Stafford. It's third down and goal. It's going to be short here. Van Jefferson again on the reception, but that's not going to do much. It's going to put him at the four, but it's going to be fourth down and goal. The game is on the line right here with one minute remaining. Can Stafford find a target? He's going towards the end zone. It's caught by Higby. It's a touchdown. A go ahead lead for the Rams. They're going to make it 27 to 24. 
Broncos will get the ball back with only 25 seconds left. Look at this. They have a chance. They're going to get in field goal range now. Can they tie this game up and go to overtime with the LA Rams? It depends on this kick, and it's going to sell wide right. The Rams will hold on and win this game 27-24. A very big upset going into Denver. And obviously, player stealing is still a thing. So the Rams will steal 99 overall cornerback Charles Woodson from the Broncos. As the Broncos are eliminated the number 14 seed, we can now narrow it down to 13 teams as the 13 seeded Rams just beat the Broncos. Next game is going to be the Chargers and Packers. It looks like Jordan Love, all he needs is the first down. And it's not even going to him. He's just going to hand the ball off. This time, it's going to be Jonathan Taylor. Second down to seven, the Chargers called one timeout. Again, JT on the carry. He's got it. He bulldozes the defender. It's going to take him into the end zone as the Packers will lead. They will end up winning this game with a Jonathan Taylor go-ahead touchdown. 41 to 31 where the best player they'll steal is Travis Kelsey the player we literally just had and had to give up to the Chargers thank God the Chargers is out because I know they would beat us eventually the number nine Chargers are out we have 12 teams remaining now now it's the Falcons and Panthers a good southeast matchup the Panthers getting a little bit upset here it's the final chance for Bryce Young as he just has to throw it to the sideline incomplete Falcons get the ball back and Desmond Ritter at starting quarterback wins this game 28 to 23 as the Falcons will also get a stud at right end. Miles Garrett, a 99 overall. The Panthers did really good this season, but unfortunately, it's not enough as the 10-seed Falcons take them down. Next up, we're going to Philadelphia as Tony Pollard will kick in a touchdown for a Cowboys lead. If the Cowboys win this, they're the 14 seed to be the best upset, and they have double trouble, so they'd steal two Eagles. But Jalen Hurts still has a chance, so here's a pass on the Eagles logo. It's a first down and 10, kind of risky. They didn't get out of bounds, but thankfully they have three timeouts. From their own 37-yard line, excuse me, 37-yard line Cowboys territory, Jalen Hurts airs it, and we have a missed assignment for a touchdown. Devontae Smith completely burns the defense, and that's going to put up six for a go-ahead lead for the Philadelphia Eagles. And there was just nothing the Cowboys could have done. They lost 35-38 to because of that. That was horrible on whoever was defending that. And because of that, they're going to add a really good defender. I hope it wasn't him defending that. Deion Sanders, a 99 overall cornerback. From the Cowboys is now going to Philadelphia. The Cowboys made a valorant effort to get in the playoffs, but unfortunately it doesn't matter. Also, their double trouble power up is not going to the Eagles. It is gone forever. Next up, we're going to the Bills versus Eagles. Looks like Aaron Rodgers has done enough to put him in the lead, but look at this throw on the run by Josh Allen as he delivers the Dawson Knox, puts him into the 48-yard line, their own territory. What a throw and catch. No hurdle with 54 seconds left. Allen delivers again. Another great throw. We're at the 30. No, it's on the ground. It's picked up by the Jets. Jets defense comes up clutch. Aaron Rodgers will come back out and take a knee and win this game 28 to 25. What a sell by the Bills right there. That was Gabe Davis who just fumbled the game away. And the best player to take for the Jets right here is Saquon Barkley, a 93 overall X-Factor running back. And now New York will be claimed by one team and one team only. That will be the New York Jets. So now we'll be down to these teams right here. We have to play the Kansas City Chiefs. That's our wild card matchup. So Steelers or Chiefs, who will it be? They will join the final six teams going into the divisional. Looks like the Chiefs have a chip on their shoulder from week 16. That's when we beat them. They're already up 7-0, but we're going to try to tie this game up. We get Deontay Johnson and diving into a first down. And to the 21-yard line, we hand off to Najee Harris. This is a good run as he's going to put us to the 7. And third down and goal from the 2. Najee Harris takes it again. He'll trout his way in. That's going to tie this game up at 7 apiece. We're first down and 10. We get the ball back once again the Chiefs score that's probably gonna be a common theme this game so that means we're gonna have to score in every single possession like this one right here Allen Robinson off to the races he burns the entire secondary and we tie this game up at 14 a Rob on the Steelers and once again the Chiefs score again so yep that means we have to score in every possession but look at this opening in the interior Nice, Kenny Pickett's going to slide down to the 46 after a 25-yard run. Once again, I stay calm in the pocket, and never mind, I throw a horrible interception. You know what? It wouldn't be a game without me making a stupid decision like that. The Chiefs only got a field goal out of that, which I'm luckily, thankfully, that happened, and I don't even know what happened here. I got kind of lucky with this catch as well. First down and 10 from the 46. Second down and 10 now, just before the two-minute warning, I delivered again to Deontay Johnson. He shreds the tackle, but he gets chased down like DK Metcalf right here, so we're at the 23-yard line with that catch. And now third down and five with a minute and 30 left in the half. 
I'm going to barely miss this sack right here, but I'm going to get the first down and 10. Once again, I got really lucky. I call a timeout. We're at the three-yard line now. I hand this off to Najee Harris, and we're in the end zone. It's going to make it 21-24, to a three-point game. We get the ball back before half again, and I throw an interception just very stupid. It's like I didn't even see him, and I just basically gave the Chiefs a two-score lead going into halftime. That's exactly what happened. But I get the ball back after half, and I am furious. I throw a great ball right here. 44-yard line is where we sit now. It's 34-21. to I know I have to get in the board with a touchdown here. And for whatever reason, I think I'm playing Madden Mobile because I scramble all the way out. But I do get the first down after getting to the 11-yard line now. And second down and eight, I'm going to stay patient in the pocket. Let it collapse. And there you go. There's an opening. Bound to lane. I barely make it into the end zone. And we have six on the board. About to make it seven. That is a huge touchdown to make this a one-score game. 34-27. to And guess what? The Chiefs did not score a touchdown. So we get the ball back. 34-28. I mean, and look at this completion on the run. It's been a really good game for all my receivers as Deontay Johnson brings that one in. And now Najee Harris gets the ball, and it's just been explosive in every single category. Huge run by Najee Harris before Jesse Bates hit sticks him out. From the two-yard line now, Najee Harris has it again. I believe that's his second or third rushing touchdown of the game, but that's going to give us our first lead of the day. I lied. The Chiefs would score another touchdown. Well, it was a lead, but now it's 35-40. to 40. Only four minutes left in the fourth quarter. This has been a high explosive battle, and I get this one for a first down and 10. A clutch catch right there after bringing a third down and 20. Now the two-minute warning. I know we have to hit the end zone here, and that's what's going to happen here as George Pickens. Easy route, easy money. We are in the lead. 41 to 40. What a day for these three receivers and Najee Harris. And I know I'm going to go for two because an extra point does nothing. We need to make it a field goal game at least. And somehow I have no clue how I got this. This was very risky of me. But we got it. 43 to 40. And guess what the Chiefs would do? They would score a touchdown. And they only led us with 29 seconds left in the season. So... 29 seconds for the rest of my life. Fourth down and 11. This could be it. I find an opening, and it's a big completion right here to Allen Robinson, who's been clutch all episode. I call a timeout with seven seconds on the board. 31-yard line. Play action pass. Another opening. This is to win it on the buzzer. Two seconds left, actually. George Pickens brings it in, and we are moving on from the wild card round. An offensive explosion of a game in Kansas City. A miracle, you can say, as we put up a 50 bomb on the Kansas City Chiefs defense. I have no clue how we just did it. Look at the game by Kenny Pickett. 20 completions, 440 yards, and three passing touchdowns. I cut out the two interceptions, obviously. And then you have 63 yards of Najee Harris with three touchdowns on the day. Now to our receivers, Deontay Johnson, 174 yards and eight catches. Insane. George Pickens, 98 yards, two touchdowns, four catches. And then you have Allen Robinson, 128 yards, one touchdown off with only three catches. And guess who we got to steal off of that? The player we once had, the OG Steeler, Cameron Hayward, who's now a 98 overall because remember that power-up earlier lift him up up five overall right end x factor cameron hayward is back with the pittsburgh steelers and then there were eight going into our divisional round which i'll have to leave you on a cliffhanger because that will be done next episode next week for our final episode the series finale it's going to have three games the divisional the conference and the super bowl I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a little hesitant if I can make the Super Bowl or not. If we want to make it, we got to stop throwing two picks a game. That's basically what we're averaging. Uh, honestly, I'm kind of glad I didn't keep track of stats because I really don't want to look at how much picks I've thrown with Kenny Pickett this entire time. But I'll leave you with one thing. I'll show you the matchups, which we'll start with going into next week. We'll have the Niners versus Rams and the Packers versus us, the Steelers. Dolphins versus Falcons and Eagles versus Jets. Those are our four divisional matchups going into next week, which... I will see you then for the series finale. So thank you guys for watching this series and tune in next week for episode 7. See ya.